It's a dangerous habit that's rife within professional football, but it remains a taboo topic that nobody's talking about and which few are aware of. So, what is snooze? Snooze is a tobacco product that comes in small parcels, similar to a tea bag sachet, and is placed alongside the gum to release nicotine into the bloodstream. Users talk of it giving them a calming effect and a sense of well-being. Stronger variants can involve a physical spark, which many footballers clearly feel is advantageous. So, according to an investigation by The Athletic, one high-profile England international is fully reliant on snus and rarely seen without one under his gum. Another big-name Premier League player weaned himself off snus after a long period of struggling for form. Players at a League One club have been selling snus to 13- and 14-year-olds in the academy. One player at a League Two club had a bit of cancer cut out of his gum because of heavy use. And the Professional Footballers Association is to undertake a research study as part of a new campaign, starting this summer to warn players of the potential risks. So what is increasingly clear is that snus has become part of everyday life within modern football, used by players from elite clubs such as Manchester United and Manchester City, all the way down to non-league and semi-professional levels. The problem, in the words of Dr James Malone, a senior lecturer in coaching science at Liverpool Hope University, is that it can be terrible for your body. It can cause mouth or throat cancer, but also a number of other side effects. In the US, snus can be freely bought, subject to age restrictions. But it's illegal to sell snus in the UK and every other European Union country bar Sweden where it originates. And it's been that way since 1992. But it is legal to consume it. No doping rules are broken by footballers who use it. The Athletic is aware of one club where they tried to ban snus before realising that it was so rife that there was little point trying to stop it. Players would openly get their pots out on the team bus on the way to matches. A number of players have agreed to speak about their use of snus, but only if their identities are kept secret. The reason, they explain, is that it could go down badly with current or future employees. So. One former Premier League footballer, we'll call him Player X, told The Athletic that he accepts he is addicted and that he worries about the health implications. He said he was never warned against snus at any of his clubs and that at least five of his current teammates are regular users. I first did it when I was 18 and I was out in Manchester with some of the players I knew from England. I tried it and I just liked it, to be fair. It chills you out, makes you relax. Initially, it was a thing people used to do to calm their nerves, especially players who get really anxious or nervous before games. But the more and longer you do it, you don't really get an effect. It becomes more of an addiction. Although snus is estimated to be 90% less harmful than smoking, each pouch contains a substantially higher amount of nicotine than a cigarette. Scientific research shows that heavy use can increase the risk of heart issues and diabetes, slow down recovery times for muscular injuries, reduce sleep quality, cause gum damage and dental issues, and leave users more likely to suffer mental health disorders. More and more, clubs are seeing a rise in the number of academy players who are using snus on a daily basis, even while they're playing. At some EFL clubs, players have reported that the trend often starts via young Premier League footballers joining on loan. So, why would these ultra-fit athletes be so accepting of a product that is on the World Anti-Doping Agency's monitoring list and can lead to addiction, dependency and multiple health issues? It just doesn't fit in with the picture of complete dedication to the sport, says one club doctor. But there is also a school of thought that there are young men who have been told what to eat and drink and how to behave all of their lives. If this is their one bit of rebellion, their attitude seems to be that it really isn't that bad. And it's true. There is plenty of evidence that the relevant players do not see snuffing as a big deal. In the Nordic countries, for example, it's been ubiquitous for many years. Victor Lindelof, Manchester United's Swedish international defender, has posted photographs on his social media accounts of his favourite snus. Henrik Larsson quietly slipped a pouch into his mouth before scoring Sweden's final kick in the penalty shootout that took them into the 1994 World Cup semi-finals at Romania's expense, and Zlatan Ibrahimovic has been filmed inserting what appears to be the same. Now, back in England, there are all sorts of dressing room tales to indicate that snus is far more prevalent than the average football fan might realise. One story is of a goalkeeper at a top-flight English club who used to keep a stash behind his goal to make sure he had a ready-made supply during matches. There is also the scene from All or Nothing, Amazon's documentary series going behind the scenes with Manchester City, when it was noted by fans on social media that one of Pep Guardiola's players had a tin beside him on the massage table. 
At some clubs, the trade in snus sees it being sold between players, with one usually volunteering to order in bulk on the internet and distribute it among teammates. Various clubs in the Premier League have told The Athletic that they discourage its use and that they give their players literature to that effect. No club, however, has been willing to go on record, as if keen to not be associated with it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, and you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.